Look at the detail on that. Like many people, when I first got into 3D printing, I got excited by the idea of being able to print whatever you wanted at home. I imagined that if I broke something, I could just print another one. Just like in sci-fi, I thought we'd be scanning parts and then hitting print, and within minutes we'd have an exact copy. It didn't take a lot of research to find that that's a little way from the truth of what 3D printing actually is. Yes, 3D printing is getting faster, and there are more tools available to help you get the files you need to print, but 3D scanning has always been the sticking point. You see, 3D scanners have always been really expensive. In many cases, the 3D scanners are actually more expensive than the 3D printers themselves, and for people like me, buying a scanner and a printer just wasn't an option. What I did instead was invest some time into learning how to CAD model so that I could design anything that I needed myself. This does have its limitations though. Complicated shapes are difficult and very time consuming to draw, and anything that needs any kind of sculpting is way beyond me for now. If only 3D scanners were cheaper, we could save a ton of time and finally get to that sci-fi utopia. That's where the Creality CR Scan Ferret comes in. The Ferret is a 3D scanner that costs less than half the price of its nearest rivals and aims to open up the world of 3D scanning to the masses. Creality sent this to me to try out, but just like all of my videos, nobody but me has any influence over the content. If you decide you might want to buy one for yourself, then check out the links in the description for a good deal. So how did I get on with setting up the CR Scan Ferret? Well, not very well actually. As you would expect, everything was packaged well and the instructions were clear. There is a well thought out setup for using your phone to run the scanner. You have a tripod, a phone holder, all of the leads to connect to an Android phone, and even a backup battery that stops you draining your phone battery while running the app. The quality of everything seemed really high and I couldn't wait to try it out. After downloading the app, I found that my phone, a Samsung Galaxy S8 from the Middle Ages, just wasn't powerful enough to run the app, and therefore the scanner. Fair enough, I thought, it is a few years old now, so I'll just use my laptop instead. Nope, Creality Scan installed OK and recognised the scanner, and it looked like everything was going to work, but as soon as I tried to scan, I just didn't get any images. The only option I had left for a more powerful computer was my desktop PC that I use for editing. Thankfully this worked and I was finally able to start scanning stuff. Unfortunately, I don't have a huge amount of room on the desk in my office and I couldn't get round the back of items to get a full 360 degree scan. I tried just sitting items on the cardboard box that the ferret came in and rotating it slowly while scanning, which kind of worked. I then bought a cheap Lazy Susan so that I could more easily spin models whilst keeping the scanner still. This worked sort of, but the scanner was still missing areas and sometimes it got lost altogether. I tried scanning all sorts of different smaller items with varying degrees of success. Sometimes details were missed and on a few occasions the app actually froze completely and I had no option but to force it to close. Looking back at the specification again, I realised that the smallest items that Creality say the ferret can scan is 50 millimetres cubed. I was definitely trying to scan things that were smaller than this, so it seemed that I was just trying to scan things that were too small for it. I was about due for a phone upgrade, so I decided now was the time to invest in a brand new Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra. This phone is specifically mentioned in the CR Scan Ferret's manual as being compatible, so I had high hopes of it working. Thankfully the app was happy to run on this much newer phone, so I was able to head out to my workshop to scan some larger items. The first thing that came to hand was this white plumbing pipe, which scanned really well, and with a little bit of cleanup would have been printable. I tried scanning a fin that I need a replacement of, but again, it was just a bit too small. I was finding that often, if the scanner's pointing at a slightly nondescript part, it can start to accelerate away as if I'm running with the scanner when actually everything was perfectly still. This happened quite a lot and made the scan completely useless and you'd have to start again. Now that I had a good idea of what the CR Scan Ferret could and couldn't do, I decided to put it to work on a bit of a project. Going back to my original dream of scanning and printing and thinking about what someone might want to use a scanner for, I decided to scan an RC car and then print a new body for it. I have a few different cars around, so my thinking was this. Scan a body shell of a car that I like, scan an RC car that I want it to fit, and then take the scan of the body and in some sort of software scale it down so that it will fit on the smaller RC car. I should then be able to print this scaled down body and have it fit directly onto the smaller car. 
This is a process that would take a huge amount of measuring and CAD modeling. So if the CR scan ferret can do this, it will prove itself as a very useful tool to save a lot of time and a considerable amount of learning. I started by scanning the RC car and by using my makeshift turntable, I was able to rotate it to try and capture all of the details that I needed. Some parts like the wheels scanned really well, but it did seem to have problems with some of the black plastic parts. I didn't take too much care with this because I didn't need all of the detail. The important bit was that I had the wheels, the chassis, the suspension parts and the body mounting posts. Some of the parts were way smaller than the 50 millimeter cubed that the scanner should be able to scan. So I was really impressed that it could pick up so much detail. The whole scan took only six minutes and I'm sure I could have got a lot more detail if I'd have just mounted the car slightly differently. I had what I needed though. So now it was time to move on and scan the body shell. This actually went a lot better than the scan of the RC car because there were a lot less smaller parts and it picked up a lot of detail. I spent eight minutes on this one, making sure that I got all of the details that I could and all of the shapes scanned really well. One thing I did notice is that different colors gave different results. Black in particular wasn't being picked up as well as the other colors. It seems that if you want to scan black objects, then you need to do something first to change the color before the scanner will pick it up. I let the app create a mesh for the parts that it did scan and then sent it over to my PC for fine tuning. I'd never worked with scan files before and it became clear to me that Fusion 360, my usual CAD modeling program of choice, wasn't going to be the best for cleaning up what I had. After a little Googling, I decided to try Mesh Mixer. This worked really well for smoothing some surfaces and trimming the edges. And after about an hour of messing about, I had something that looked right. I then imported the RC car scan and set to scaling my body to make it fit. Again, with Mesh Mixer, this was really simple and I was actually really impressed with how easy it was to use. Before long, I had a printable STL file, which I sliced and printed. After removing support and a little bit of cleanup, I was finally ready to try it on the car. Impressively, it dropped straight on. No trimming, no filing, no problems. All I had to do was drill a couple of body post holes, which I probably could have done in Mesh Mixer if I'd have realized how good the results would actually be. Finally, I'd found something that this budget 3D scanner can do really well. After this, I tried scanning people, which is again something that the scanner can do really well. But flat dark surfaces, not so much. So now I have a usable RC car body and some scans of my family members. Let's look at some pros and cons for the Creality CR Scan Ferret. On the negative side, don't expect it to work with anything but the latest in phone or computer technology. If you're thinking of buying one, make sure that you own a compatible device first. Also, I found the phone app and the PC software to be quite buggy. On quite a few occasions, I found myself trying to start a scan, but not getting any kind of image at all. Usually resetting back to the main menu and trying again would sort things, but it was quite frustrating. While scanning, the ferret was quite good at recognizing areas it had scanned before if it ever got lost, but any plane surfaces would easily confuse it and ruin the whole scan. I've read that adding stickers or baby powder can help it keep its bearings, but haven't really tried these yet. Don't expect to scan small things with the ferret. I had very little joy getting accurate details from anything with sharp corners or edges that wasn't of a decent size. For me, this is the biggest issue with using the ferret to scan with 3D printing in mind. If you can only scan large objects and then you want to print those same objects in the original scale, then you're going to need a big 3D printer. The RC car body that I scaled down would only fit on one of my largest printers with a 300 by 300 millimeter bed. If you only have a smaller 3D printer, then you're probably not going to enjoy having to scale everything down just to print it. Also, most of the black areas I tried to print were just simply not recognized. You can buy special sprays and coatings and you have the option of spray painting any black objects before you scan them. But for many objects, this isn't going to be an option. As I've said, the app is quite buggy. And if you want to do anything with the meshes that you get after scanning, then you're probably going to need to learn to use some new software like Mesh Mixer. On the positive side, this scanner does feel really well made and like a high quality piece of equipment. The ferret comes in a very neat protective case, so it makes it very portable if you want to use it somewhere with your phone. The supplied accessories make it really easy to stand the scanner still while you move an object, or it's just as easy to pick it up and use it freehand too. It tracks around objects well, and if you keep it the right distance, a lot of detail is captured. The detail that is captured is very dimensionally accurate too. As long as what you're scanning is big enough, then you can rely pretty heavily on the fact that what you're scanning is the correct size, as we saw with the RC car body. 
Certain objects scan really well too. If you want 3D printed busts of family members, then the CR scan ferret is great. I managed to get my wife and son to stay still long enough for me to scan them, so I now have miniature versions of their heads watching me while I work, which, despite what you may think, isn't actually creepy. The scanner can also capture colour and then apply it to your model afterwards. This means it's actually more than possible to scan yourself and then import a full colour model into your favourite computer game in the future. So who would I recommend the CR Scan Ferret to? If you want 3D models for games or animation, or even if you want to scan something, import it into CAD software, and then design something to interface with it, then this could be perfect. However, that dream of being able to scan something, hit print and get an exact copy is probably still a little way off, certainly at this price point. Depending where you live, the CR Scan Ferret is a little over $300. For that, I think you actually get a lot for your money, even if it does fall short in a couple of areas. Remember to check out the links in the description if you decide to buy one, and hit subscribe if you want to see me review more 3D scanners in the future. I have a feeling this is an area I may revisit soon. Click one of these videos here to check out one of my other reviews where I put more products through their paces. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.